Oh, well, I guess this week's um, half pint's going to be really short. Isn't it? <laughs> Hello, and welcome to our midweek show, affectionately known as Half Pints. <laughs> Just changing the subject, um, we need to bring up the fact that the listeners have got a new name. The crudely mistaken yeah. ones <laughs> that they chose. That's for a mouthful. <laughs> uh, but it shortens down really nicely to the CMOs. Yeah, I quite like that. And so, big thanks to Miguel Makes. I think that's how you pronounce your name. Sorry if it's wrong. Miguel Makes for coming up with that name. I think it's brilliant, and it won the uh, won the poll on Instagram. It's kind of weird was. thinking that. You have a, a diehard core of listeners, even after, I mean, 11 episodes, there are actually people out there who enjoy <laughs> listening to this. I still need to wrap my head around that. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite interesting, isn't it? I've, uh, I quite like the fact that um, Jesper Makes follows, and follows us on Instagram. And um, but the only thing he's ever liked was a picture of me eating a pasty last weekend. <laughs> <laughs> he knows quality. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Finally, some decent content. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's what a pasty is. <laughs> CMO stands for Chief Marketing Officer in the real world. So everyone should know that if you're a listener to us, then you are in charge of marketing. So <laughs> spread the word. <laughs> We don't deal in the real world in this KJ. <laughs> nah, it's true. It's true. The real, we were trying to escape the real world. That's why we were that's here. Right. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My mistake. But that's that's real funny because uh, a friend of mine just recently started in a, a new job and then they didn't have someone on marketing. And of course, being the youngest and the newest, uh, they asked if she can do it. And of course, yeah, yeah, she could look into it. So now she's actually head of marketing in that company. <laughs> and then I think it was yesterday I got a message. How much time and effort is it to pull off a podcast? Because someone in the company said that, oh, that could be an outlet for us communicating with our customers. So I just put down like, uh, all right, you need a hour for recording and then 14 days of frustration uh, doing editing. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, hunky dory. So. <laughs> if we were in the real world in this podcast, what would our roles be? Who would be marketing and who would be, I don't know, CEO and all of that? You would definitely be marketing, Glenn. <laughs> yeah. I would certainly not be. Then we would be failing badly. I, I think I would have a role as I'm comfortable in, uh, like, uh, doing backstage work anywhere. I don't, I don't feel the need to be exposed <laughs> for other people, basically. So <laughs> I'm pretty happy just pulling the strings. <laughs> I think, the I think KJ's the CEO. <laughs> I was just going to say, I have no problem exposing myself, but that sounded wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but we maybe, know. Maybe I'm the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that that being funny, I had uh, this year, I, I started a company and it was basically just to snatch the name. But of course then you're faced with the fact that, all right, uh, you need a name for your position in the company. Of course, you can be the daily manager or whatnot, but of course, there are endless possibilities. And of course, <laughs> what should I call myself? Because I, I could uh, use that on LinkedIn as well. So it's like, uh, I think CEO is not descriptive enough for what I actually do. So I have to find something. I mean, Overlord has a kind of negative connection to it, so I, but something like in that grandiose scheme of things. Yeah, that's, I think it was uh, the writer Brandon Sanderson when he started a company with another writer, and they thought about, oh, what should be our descriptions be? And he, well, I should be the CEO. 
fine. Then I'll be the empress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can pick whatever you want. <laughs> I'm just a boring CEO. Yeah. That's so, yeah, a I think a Overlord is a good one. <laughs> yeah. Your supreme ruler, perhaps. Oh, that's kind of bad connotation as well. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> there are some you should avoid for obvious reasons. Dragon Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's got a ring to it. Anything with a dragon in it should be good. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think it's funny when you get people with, um, I don't know, the, the people who think that the jobs are, aren't worth as much, such as a cleaner, trying to dress it up and give themselves a bigger title, like indoor manager or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Nail engineer. Yeah. When I worked uh, in the garden centres, the uh, my manager at the time, before he got the sack and I got his job, used to hated being referred to as a gardener, chief sustainability gardener. officer. That's a yeah. that's a, yeah. <laughs> used to say I'm not a gardener, I'm a horticulturalist. It's like get over yourself. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, but it's it, it it can be funny with those jobs that are i mean if you play around in your garden then you it's you're like you're a gar- gardener in your own garden yeah but gardener <laughs> can also mean it's an actual profession yeah. that you need <laughs> i mean so that's if it's an there are some titles that are academic and some titles that are just what the job is and some titles it's it can be just doing i mean yeah. being a writer does that mean that you have to write professionally and actually publish books and do just no, I just put words on a page, so I'm a writer? Yeah, I think some sometimes you have to put professionally in front of it, don't you? So, I mean, you know, for fun, I refer to myself as a YouTuber, but I'm certainly not a professional YouTuber. <laughs> but then you're failing badly, I would say, if, you, <laughs> <laughs> if your aim yeah. is to be a, a, at the moment, be a professional YouTuber, then yeah. yeah I'm a yeah, chief yeah, overlord... Exactly. Uh... <laughs> Empress YouTuber, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the the most restrictions are the ones you put on yourself in your own head. So, uh, yeah, you should start with a proper title, I guess. <laughs> should we give each other's titles for our for our jobs within this podcast? Then <laughs> I'm I'm just going straight for Overlord now. You brought it up, shotgun on Overlord. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Give me a week to think about it and I'll have some uh, proper suggestions for next time. (laughs) No, come on. Do it now. (laughs) Oh, you can see the Uh, cogs clicking on Havard's face. KJ's looking uh, up to the heavens for inspiration. (laughs) I was just looking up and I saw one of probably a thousand unicorns we have in this house. So. A mythical creature, check. <laughs> Col- colorful, check. <laughs> it's like long pointy thing, check. <laughs> it's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I dream one. <laughs> you're going to be chief, chief unicorn then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> chief unicorn leader. <laughs> over, over all the other unicorns. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> changing the subject again because uh, that just got silly um, <laughs> so <laughs> a few weeks ago you were saying you were talking about fjords and uh, mountains in Norway Yeah. and for some reason I thought I'd google how many mountains there are in Norway any ideas without googling it it Too many. very much depends on your definition of a mountain true well, I asked Google that's a, that's a, how many mountains there were in Norway, and Google I think said it, there are. Over, we're talking singular mountains, not the mountain ranges. I just that's I literally said how many mountains in Norway, and the answer it gave me was over. Uh, okay, yeah, uh, h- hundred and seventy-five. You, you come up with a number, and then I, yeah, what what did I say? Hundred and seventy-five. More. Have you just googled yeah. it, KJ? More, no. more is a very broad number. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but I could just add one to yours and still be more correct. So I just say more than you. 
<laughs> so All right, your final answers, boys. Come on, Glenn. Over I mean, thirty thousand. That sounds. Then they must have a really. I mean, that's an Australian giving the. I, they must. Have, they must have used the Danish benchmark by that point. Yeah, I mean, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, if I if I were to look out the window of our house now, there I, there's nothing I can see that I would define as mountains, more like uh, hills. Um, but yeah. So, what is the definition of a mountain? That's a good question. There is. I'm not going to Google that. I'm just finding out in Sweden because this is good content, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I bet we are fewer, even though we're bigger. Because, I mean, Norway is more or less oh, it's just small. mountains with some flat parts in between. So there are as many as how many major mountains are described as in Sweden? How do they do have think? any major mountains in Sweden, KJ? I mean, it's, I think, I feel that like. That is mountains with at least a 600 meter of prominence. Having a primary factor of at least six hundred meters. Yeah, we have a couple of those. But was it thirty thousand in in Norway? In Norway? Yeah. Then I'm guessing three for Sweden. <laughs> 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 but I would say half of the a little more than half of what Norway's got. I say. No. Nope. So seventeen thousand. No, yes. 87. <laughs> I was close. That's uh, yeah. Oh, wow, that's interesting. That was fewer than I thought. Interesting. So, how many mountain peaks are there in England? I'm not going to guess because I can see it 24. <laughs> um. But that yeah. that being said, I actually Googled England a couple of days ago because I was really uncertain if London was a part of England or not. I, I did not have a mental image of the difference between England and <clears throat> Wales. And were there any other countries between that and Scotland? I did not basically know, so oh, I had okay. to Google it. So did that give you the answer for the mountains? You're Googling again, aren't you? Can hear yeah, you tapping away on your keyboard. A mountain is, uh, is th- rising 300 meters at least, is 42, a mountain, according 42, to Wikipedia. 42, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51. 200. Hmm. That's 200 in England. Yeah. That's quite interesting, because Sweden's quite big, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, wasn't that uh, major mountains? It's 600 a, meters? Yeah, the, and the ones the says... Did you know that there are more than 200 mountain peaks in England that exceed 610 metres? There you go. This is really... No, of course. (laughs) Um, All right. I I was kind of impressed and then I was a bit scared and now I realise why. Um, I just went to Google and I started writing definition and then the first option was definition of a mountain and I was like, holy shit. But then, of course, my... (laughs) last search was of course mountains and <laughs> hills in england so yeah. he just based mm-hmm. that off the last search of course <laughs> hopefully a large natural elevation of the earth's surface rising abruptly from the surrounding level a large steep hill <laughs> all right it's yeah it's... that might be that there is not abruptly enough in in sweden that we are yeah but then again more uh... Definition of abruptly. I mean, this. We are a more curvy country. Suddenly or unexpectedly. Then what is unexpected? Unexpected I mean, mountain. What is unexpected for me and you two is probably going to be very different, I guess. So it's, uh, this is not very scientific. I hate it? unexpected mountains. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Abrupt, unexpected mountains. That's a pain in the ass. Oh, well, I guess this week's um, half pipe's going to be really short. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happens. What we go- what we googled this week. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to turn into that kind of podcast. <laughs> yeah, but now, now that KJ have the nailed the 
the small jingle which you can use between segments that really doesn't have a connection. It's like those old fairy tales you got on cassettes in the old days. Yeah, turn you the have page. Yeah. <laughs> turn the page. <laughs> so <it's> like, <laughs> oh. I was expecting the end of the half pipe the first time I heard it. <laughs> yeah. So, do you mean that we should uh, have a book as well to accompany the? Or maybe an Instagram post and you swipe the pictures when you hear the sound. <laughs> we need a book because we can't we can't have a film without a book. <laughs> oh man, Chris, Chris, Christmas is coming too soon. We should have a Christmas edition. We should make a pamphlet and then they can actually read and follow along as we talk. So it's like uh, oh. a Christmas carol. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh no, he's gotten another project. Oh no. <laughs> but that being said, I need to uh, like because I was not kidding when I was thinking about sleigh bells. Five pounds. <laughs> Four pounds. Fifteen pounds? Jesus Christ. I could build it cheaper. Or no, I no I couldn't, but I could build it. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, sleigh bell knuckle irons. That's uh, knuckle irons. Yeah, that's they sounds... fighting sleigh bells. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, to give that festive feeling when you're fighting in uh, <laughs> yeah. over the. Then you get gunned. <laughs> oh, that's so. Stupid. Oh, that's. Uh, but that being said, I have uh, since we spoke last time, I have a Christmas project which I ordered parts for, which will probably not arrive until mid-December and actually building it and getting a video out before Christmas is not possible, I'm guessing, but I really want to do it. So you have all these uh, small uh, winding musical box. Yeah. Um, I just ordered the three of them with various Christmas tunes and the three electric motors and a motor controller and so on. So I'm going to build a contraption where you don't have to swivel them. You can just flick the switch for the one you want to play and then you have a speed controller to adjust the speed. So um, <laughs> that's going to be a think, Christmas ornament. Do you think we could get the listeners to play along doing a, the drinking game? Is there anything I repeat, <laughs> repeatedly say or or KJ? I haven't noticed. Not that I'm, I'm aware of, but if mm. any any listeners know that we're repeating, yeah, we keep specific using the same words. Thing. <laughs> yeah, I I think I can't name anything on the top of my head, but I do know I um, often start sentences with and uh, or er uh, or so. It's probably. There's material for a drinking game there, but then it would be nice doing it. Yeah. That being said, I can't think of anything specific for you, Havard. What about you, KJ? <laughs> I mean, if we start with the awkward silences, then the people would get really drunk really fast, but yeah. Um, and that, that's the thing. Uh, that's, uh, that's a direct translation from Norwegian to English that really doesn't work well when I'm listening to it, but I'm using but, yeah, a lot. Uh, so that's the thing. I'm, <laughs> I'm painfully aware of myself, but it would be nice to do this as a live stream where people can actually just talk to us as we go. But of course, if we are the the premise of the drinking game and we are then aware of it it's gonna color <laughs> how you actually speak and talk so <laughs> gonna get worse yeah definitely <laughs> but we could have a, a we could do a live christmas stream where we every 10 minutes do a shot and then we just see how far we get until we run out of recording time or if it just <laughs> ends in total gibberish. <laughs> of course, the practicalities of it is very difficult because then you That's need uh, two days uh, of recovery afterwards and I can't really see <laughs> shoehorning yeah. that into my everyday schedule. That's only 12 shots. We could do that. <laughs> 
Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just yeah, went I, pale at the thought of it, didn't you? I had one glass uh, of uh, white wine here the other day, and I just ooh, that one kicked hard. <laughs> so yeah, so it's, uh, it's been a few years since uh, my yeah. alcohol tolerance has been anything near to being social. Twelve shots. I wonder how long time I have to go back to accumulate that amount of alcohol. I mean, I'm just at least a half year or something like that. <laughs> I do not consume a lot. So I would be down and out pretty quickly. So we can do a, a, quiz, a, Christmas, a Christmas drinking game, and we've got Havard's promise to play some music for us, hasn't he? Well... <laughs> I'm pretty sure if you listen back to the recording, there was nothing near a promise anywhere there. <laughs> well, I'm sure I can figure out some way of editing this, so there's a promise now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck. I just said promise in a sentence. Yep. So it's, yeah. Yes, did you... you did. <laughs> right in the trap. <laughs> I noticed something in your video, your last video, um, Havard, as well, but I can't remember for the life of me what it was. I thought, oh, I must, I must bring that up. Something weird and obscure as usual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah now I well, got it might curious. have been your router table. Is your, yeah. is your, have you got a trend router table? No, it's it's Rutland's. So it's actually, is I it? Ordered, ordered it from the UK. They had an offer and then I just checked it out. And all right, it's not too much to have it shipped. Ah, of course, I didn't the... take the Norwegian VAT into account after, before, after I pressed order, but then it was too late. So uh, it looks the same as my trend one. That was it. Yeah, and I think it's something they bought from China, I guess, and slapped their sticker on. I, I've seen yeah. a lot of the other companies having the same one, but it's actually, well, I'm I'm lying. It's. It's decent for the the price, but I did do some upgrades to it because the the cloth bag underneath was leaking as hell. So I built a rigid box oh, okay. uh, to put underneath. But then a lot of the set screws are, I just keep finding them in the the shavings in the bottom, and then I just put Loctite <laughs> on them and screw them back in. But it still keeps uh, disintegrating itself. Oh, okay. Oh, well, so, mine mine's not got a cloth bag underneath it. Or a rigid one. It's got a router underneath it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's... Uh, if you have a good vacuum connected to the top side, that yeah should be sufficient. But, yeah. I did actually gonna... make a suction point both underneath and on the top, but my vacuum is not strong enough to... So it still accumulates oh, okay. a lot of crap uh, in the bottom there. Never actually connected my vacuum up to mine. The um, the outlets are really funny size on the router table. I've not got one that matches it. Yeah, I made actually. <laughs> That's one of the first things I actually used my CNC for. I made adapters, which is basically just uh, I made a lot of rings in plywood uh, yeah. with a uh, proper outer and inner diameter, and just glued those together to an adapter. So I have a lot of those. Oh, brilliant! Nice. Um, are you going to make a little uh, table for your new palm router? Don't have any plans for it, but I, I'll make something if I need it, I feel. Yeah, it's um, really, really handy, especially if you're doing roundovers regularly to yeah. everything, which I don't, maybe you just don't do if you've not got a router table. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I haven't had any use for it, but I think uh, there was times when I felt that, oh, now it would be nice to have a router. Um, but yeah, and that's, we'll see. That's one of the. It feels wrong complaining about it, but changing bits in the router table is like I try to think of other ways of doing a project so I don't have to actually <laughs> lift it up and change it. And it is less than a two minutes operation. Yeah. So I basically have one bit that I use to remove tabs and everything uh, when I take parts out of the CNC. And sometimes I want to do a roundover. 
oh, then I need to get the tools from the shelf. I need to bend <laughs> my knees to get it. And then, of course, I need to open it up and I have to change the adapter plate uh, that covers around the bit. And it's like, no, this thing doesn't need roundovers. I just <laughs> use some sandpaper and call it a day. So. <laughs> yeah. It's quite annoying. I've got two routers. One's, one's attached to the table and then I've got a, you know, a, one for freehanding. And the one I use, I wanted to use for freehanding, I've lost one of the collets. So I, I can't, all the bits I've got, I can't get to fit it, which is a right pain in the arse. So I have to take the, rout, the router off the router table every time I want an independent router nowadays, which is bloody annoying. Yeah. I actually ordered, I'm not sure if I ordered two just to be on the safe side to see if they matched because I have a Bosch uh, palm router, which is basically crappy. I don't like it, but it's the only one they have on battery. And I also bought a collet for, for inches because a lot of the bits uh, that uh, the Americans use are not in millimeter, but they have a wider range. And then of course, more cheaper uh, bits as well. So now I got the collets for, I think it's six and eight millimeters and whatever the Americans use mostly, if it's a, if it's a quarter inch or something or half a stone or whatever, <laughs> or a, a 15th of a football field or whatever, or Olympic swimming pool. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Check us out talking about tools. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, like a proper maker podcast. <laughs> oh yes, this is something uh, that I've been meaning to to mention uh, ever since uh, Skapel Festivalen because uh, someone there, I thought, I think it was Stian who who asked what platforms we are on, and if someone is listening to this podcast, whatever platform you are listening on, there should be an a link to an RSS feed in the description and if you use that copy it and paste it into the search function of your preferred podcast player we should pop up because we are on most podcast players just the search functions barely works on a lot of them yeah. but if you use the rss feed in the uh, link in the in the description that should make make it able for you to find us and if you do, can't find us on your preferred podcast player then you have shit taste in podcast players and should choose something else <laughs> uh, a, I, I recommend pocket cast that's a great <laughs> podcast player there's actually a, a couple of ways to listen to us on our instagram as well including the rss feed for anybody to uh, take a look at yeah and if you're real old school then you can uh, just hit me up and i'll send you an email with a mp3 vinyl. file or something <laughs> yeah <a> vinyl <laughs> <laughs> can you record it on cassette <laughs> i actually can i bought a few years ago i bought one of the last uh, cassette decks ever made and it was a company that it came in the original box. I don't think it has been used. And I, I paid just as much for it now as it was new, uh, basically. Uh, so uh, I have a proper cassette deck, both for recording and playing. <laughs> so uh, I have a couple of mini discs right here if we want to. <laughs> oh, that's... Uh, now we're talking obscure. Why, yeah. why, why have you still got those, KJ? Because I'm bad at throwing stuff away. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> they look like they make a good target for smashing. No, I don't think they would smash in an interesting way. I mean, they look <laughs> rather nice, I think. But <laughs> yeah, so if everyone needs uh, some mini discs, then just hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> I got four of them unopened. Said and, no one uh, all... ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I still I'm just putting it back where they were, and I won't <laughs> throw throw them away today either. No. Nope. Well, thank you very much for listening to this week's half pint. Hopefully, next Tuesday there'll be another episode for you. See you then. Bye.